Hi everyone! Today's subject is plant water uptake. Have you ever wondered how plants pump water? In our bodies, our heart pumps our blood, which is essential for all the processes our body has to do. Water is incredibly important for all processes that happen in plants. Without water, plants would literally shrivel up and die. Plants are 90% water, so water uptake is very important. Plants do not have a heart to transport the water, but we're going to cover plant water transportation today. This is a graphic showing water uptake in plants. Water enters the plant through the roots and then enters the xylem, which is the pipes that plants use for transporting water. The water then moves up the plant and into the leaves where it's used in photosynthesis and evaporated. The process of the water evaporating is called transpiration. You'll notice that there is an arrow here. It says high water potential to low water potential. You'll remember back when we talked about the light reactions of photosynthesis, we talked about how molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration. This water potential gradient is part of the way that plants uptake water. You'll see that there's negative 0.2 MPa water potential here, and then it gets more negative, 0 0.6, 0 0.1.5, negative 100 at the leaf. So it's going from low to even much lower. You need to remember that water always moves from a system with a high water potential to a system with a low water potential, just like molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration. Water is absorbed through the plant roots mainly through the root hairs, which we learned about previously in the plant root biology lecture. In addition to water, plants also uptake minerals, and that process can sometimes take energy. Some minerals enter the plant passively, which means it does not take energy. But sometimes the plant needs to actively pursue getting the minerals into the plant. When something is said to be active, it takes ATP which is created in the light reactions of photosynthesis, and the plant also gets it through cellular respiration. Let's go through this example of how plants uptake minerals through their roots. At the root surface, the plant will pump hydrogens from the interior of the root into the soil. This process takes ATP. It's necessary for the plant to do this because the plant wants to get these minerals. These different colors represent different positive ions that the plant needs to grow, such as potassium. Because the ions are positively charged and soil is negatively charged, the soil molecules are holding on to these minerals very tight, and the plant can't get it. To offset this, the plant expels hydrogen ions into the soil, which causes there to be a very high concentration of positive ions on the outside of the root, allowing these positive ions to enter the root through diffusion going from a high concentration to a low concentration. This is the same type of concentration gradient we learned about in the light reactions of photosynthesis. Now let's talk about water uptake in the plant. Water will enter the root via osmosis. The water will come from an area where there's a low solute to a high solute because water likes to go where there's more solutes. Think of it as water going from a negative water potential to an even more negative water potential. Aquaporins also help regular water uptake. You may recall this cross section of a root. Water will enter the root, usually through the root hair, and then go through the cortex, the endodermis, the pericycle, and then enter the xylem. Water movement in plants happens in two different ways. The first is symplastic movement which means through the cytoplasm, as you can see here, and then goes to the xylem. Avoplastic pathway is through the cell walls, which means the water is not entering the cells, but going through the cell walls. And then, because of the Casparian strip here, water that's moving apoplastically then needs to enter the cells, and then through the pericycle, and then into the xylem. Let's review what we've covered so far, using this graphic. Water, which is in the soil, enters the plant mainly through the root hairs. Once the 
water travels through the root and gets into the xylem, the water in the xylem moves upwards. This is against gravity. We're now going to cover how the plant goes against gravity to get the water from the roots to the above ground. Water molecules are amazing. Let's cover two properties of water that allow plant water uptake to go against gravity. The first one is cohesion, two water molecules coming together. Water molecules are attracted to each other. These hydrogen bonds create surface tension on water. Have you ever seen a small insect walk across water very easily? That's because of the cohesion forces of water, the water sticking together so that the bug, since it's very light, can literally walk across the water. Adhesion is the force that causes water to be sticky to other molecules, such as the side of a xylem. I remember cohesion, water molecules coming together, and adhesion, water sticking or being added to something else, such as the xylem. Again, cohesion is water to water, and adhesion is water to other things. Transpiration happens when water, which enters the plant through the roots and then is transported through the xylem, gets into the leaf and is evaporated. Because water molecules stick together, which is called cohesion, as one water molecule is evaporated, that pulls other water molecules up through the xylem. Think of it this way. If you're in a large classroom and all of you hold hands, if one student leaves the room, all of you will be forced to leave the classroom because you're all holding hands, you're all connected. So the water molecules are all connected and when one leaves the leaf, it pulls the other towards that direction. The adhesion forces of water, which are water sticking to things like the xylem, allow this to work even when the pulling or the evaporation isn't happening at a constant rate. That way, all the water doesn't just fall through back into the roots. So the cohesion and adhesion forces of water allow water uptake in plants to go against gravity. Now let's cover factors that affect transpiration. Again, transpiration is water loss from leaves into the atmosphere. The easiest way to think of this is water evaporating from your skin or sweat evaporating from your skin. So if there's a high temperature, does that increase transpiration? If it's hot outside, do you sweat more? The answer is yes. Higher temperatures increase transpiration or sweat evaporation from your skin. If it's really humid out and you're sweating, does your sweat evaporate? No, you get really sticky. Same thing goes for a plant leaf. If there's high humidity, transpiration or evaporation off of the leaf decreases. If it's really windy and you're sweating, does your sweat evaporate? Yes, that's why a nice cool breeze feels really good if you're sweating a lot. Same for a plant leaf, wind increases transpiration by blowing the newly transpired water vapor from the leaf. Just like sweat leaving our bodies, water evaporating off the leaf can cool the plant. It's also important to remember that without transpiration, minerals or hormones would not be able to move throughout the plant. A main way that plants lose water is through stomata, small openings on the underside of the leaf. Through a process that includes abscisic acid, plants can close their stomata to conserve water. Let's review what we've covered so far. Water enters the roots, mainly through the root hairs, and then enters the xylem. Because of the cohesion and adhesion forces of water, as water is transpired or evaporated out of the stomata, the leaving water molecule pulls up a chain of water that's in the xylem. This is how water transports through plants against gravity. The model that we just covered of water uptake is called the transpiration cohesion tension model. It includes three main parts that we already covered. Let's review them. The first is transpiration. Water exits the stomata. The second is cohesion. Water molecules stick together. As one water molecule moves up the xylem, it pulls another one along with it. Tension. Transpiration causes negative pressure in the xylem, meaning that water moves from a negative to a more negative water potential. Today we went over the steps and properties of water that allow plant water uptake. 
Remember to review all the terms and go through this process on your own, drawing a diagram in your notes. Feel free to email or comment with any questions. Until next time, have a great day.